we had this safe for like um, eight years, something like that. And it has a very simple code written on a piece of paper and we lost the code and there's something in there. And I can't get it out. Things like that. It, sometimes things like that just bug me. Um, anyway, I'm Posco from Morris Pixel. And besides this little thing, I had a very productive week. So um, I've been creating a bunch of stuff, uh, drawing things, programming things. And um, today we're gonna draw even more things because last week's episode was about uh, drawing the end boss or a boss type thing. And I had a lot of positive comments on the drawing stuff. And so I thought today we're gonna draw a little bit. Well, not we, <laughs> I'm gonna draw a little bit more and you get to watch, but I'll also show you some code to show you how a drawing like that actually works and operates in a game. So um, see you after the intro. Put it away for now so uh today i wanted to draw a little bit more uh, right now i'm in the process of game development where the game is pretty much done um but i get to add a lot of content and i still have a bunch of ideas and uh things written down that i want to add to the game so it's basically every day is just uh, creating stuff drawing stuff uh, adding it into the game based on what's already there so there's not a lot of programming involved because i'm just reusing things that are already in the game and sometimes twisting it a little bit so that it functions a little bit different but overall it's very little work to add a lot of extra content which is a great phase to be in today i'm gonna create a little creature that um, is hidden you don't see it unless you actually walk near it then it suddenly comes out of the floor so some sort of tentacle type thing and that ties into the big bad as we created last week so um let's just dive in opening gimp and start doing some pixelating right so again i'm starting with the outline for the game and then adding the colors and then when i have the main color i'll add shades to it and make it look pretty some highlights here and there and the next step is to animate it i started the tentacle actually at the end frame of the animation because i know i want to have a big tentacle sticking out of the ground so it's much easier to um, make it turn back into the ground this way and then we can just flip all these frames in their order and we should have a tentacle growing out of the floor we also need a spot where the tentacle appears so some type of wormhole because it's like a wormy tentacle and a wormhole i thought it was very interesting so there's a little wormhole opening up where a tentacle comes out and tries to reach and touch you and attack you and things like that it's a horrible way to die but it's fun to add to a game tentacle created and as you can see there's not a lot of animation going into something like this um, I like it like that for I like it like I like it for like that for this game and most of my games I add a few more animation frames but this game is very I want to get that feeling of an old classic 70s or 60s sci-fi movie and they used like clay figures and other things and that was all very uh, low frame rate so this really ties into that and on top of that it also saves me a lot of time and I'm just one guy creating a full game and I want to complete the game so I can't put hours and hours into animating stuff because then I don't get around to doing the code and the game needs to be finished at some point which now means this bunch of pixels has to be animated and programmed so so the next stage is actually adding the code and I just have a large list of alien creatures there and I have a little creature editor in the program built in the game I've shown it uh, some weeks ago but to be honest I have not really used it at all I've just been tinkering with the data and just hard coding the, sub the numbers in there to see if creatures and aliens work the way I want them to be and then just modifying them here and there. So uh, It works and it's not the best way but I just can't be bothered starting my own creature editor 
just to change or create a little new creature. So I just copy an existing one and then we add a bunch of stuff to make the new one work. Now this creature is really a great example of hacking creatures into your own code because I'm just reusing parts of the code but since it's a very specific alien popping out of the floor like that there is a bunch of stuff that needs to be created just to have make that work and then once he's popped up he acts like all the other aliens so it's um it's a bit of a hacky way to add code to your game but to be honest this is probably happening with all the games for every developer uh, you start out with very clean code and then the further you get into the code and the, the bigger the game becomes things become a little bit spaghetti and hacky and, and things are just reused in ways they were originally not intended to but the end result is that it actually works and that there's new stuff in the game and more stuff and that's really the only thing that matters. It's not about writing clean code or anything. Um, I know there are a lot of developers that always want to write the, the cleanest code and the best code. And But to be honest, make it work, make it run, complete it, finish it and do it all over again. Alright, so the tentacle is now there, it's growing out of the floor, but uh, it just needs a little bit of tweaking. But we have a tentacle creature happening, which is the main thing, so let's fix a couple of things. It doesn't need a shadow, it's in the ground, not on the ground. And, um, I think we are there, so um, let's have a look at how the full tentacle works in the game. Space Grunt's Law, Stardate, um, something, something. We beam down to the planet to investigate the distress signal. Tentacle working, operating, and I know it's a little bit rough and it needs tweaking and changes here and there, but I'm pretty pleased with this first setup and we'll just evolve it as we work on other stuff during the game development. So um, right now, that means we just have a bunch more of these little things to do to the game. And I'm pretty confident this game will be done in the next three or four weeks. So end November is still my goal and I'm pretty confident I'm gonna make that happen. Um, what's left is creating a trailer, probably. That's, I haven't really thought about it yet, but I'm just gonna record gameplay and then cut the trailer out of it. I need to add a couple of alternate worlds so there will be uh, various things happening in the game and you can enter them or activate them or interact with it and you will open up a different world and there you will be able to find like a super rare item that can't be found anywhere else. There's already one of those in the game right now but I have a few more ideas written down so need to work on those things and another thing I want to work on is the daily challenges which is really the leaderboards and uh, having a daily game that everybody has the same game every day or well on that day you have the same game as everybody else and you just try to get as high as possible in the high score table so um those are the biggest feature that are still left other than that it's just adding content like this tentacle and creatures and other things and ideas I have and a few more items or cards playing cards and then we have a Space Grunts 2. Um, all you see now is already available and live in the early exit version on Steam. So if you want to try it out, check out the link in the description below because um, it's going to go up. The price is going to go up. I already bumped it a few times earlier with every big release or big update. I bumped the price up. So uh, you can still get it at a discount before it's released in like end November, early December. So um that's it for this week's video. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave some comments below because speaking of comments, we have some comments from last week's video. First comment, Christian Zimmer. Very interesting. I like the flow of the game very much. I know you said technical stuff. Programming has no big audience, but I'd like to see you do some coding again. Perhaps something with how your AI battle system works. Um, maybe next week. I can't promise it, but um, I already wanted to do a little video on how these aliens are being programmed and how their choices are being made. So maybe next week. Marvin Mohammed Sr. Thanks for doing this video. Just going through the process helps me learn. 
Uh, good to know. I'm glad it actually helps people just watching me do pixel art and then it helps you doing hopefully better pixel art or learn how to do pixel art. And really pixel art is a lot of um, patterns. Drawing a circle in pixel art is really just figuring out the pattern for drawing a circle. Once you know that, you know how a circle is made, things like that. There are a lot of little patterns and things in pixel art and just doing it a lot and watching it a lot helps people uh, getting better at it, I hope. Sager Astana, the photo of the horror game from Game Jam you showed looks great. I was also searching your channel, saw a prototype for beat em up with a character looking like he's Ash. He is actually Ash from Ashworld. Um, that was the prototype I was working on before Ashworld. I had a couple of guys running around beating each other up, um, but I didn't really understand how to make it funny, how to make it an interesting game. So I dumped the beat up game. I beat up the beat em up game and I turned it into an Ashworld and actually used the same characters in that game. Idle bots. I think Soul Knight is a knockoff of your game, Pascal. They remind me of the guy from Buildbox with his mentor model. Um, I just checked Soul Knight and yeah, it looks like Heroes of Loot, but to be fair, Heroes of Loot is based on Gauntlet and there are a lot of twin stick shooters in dungeons. I don't really think they knocked off my game in any way. They just had the same theme and the same idea. So I don't really, I don't think that's what happened. VR with Andrew. Great name. Great work. Good note on the correlation of traditional versus digital pixel art. You do make it look effortless. You should actually see me doing it. I don't use a mouse, I use my touchpad. That has upset people before on the channel, so I usually try to avoid recording that part of me doing pixel art. Yael Cosmel, the intro music, question mark. I'm guessing you want to know what the intro music was. It was Fast Life from Iger Duskin. I'm not sure if you can find it on the internet. I had it from Epidemic Sound, so. Pepsi Coder, great video, thanks. All right, that's enough of the comments for today. Uh, leave a comment on this video and maybe I'll get to it next week and I'll see you guys next week because I'll be here and you'll probably be there and watching and... All right, uh, bye.